Hello, and welcome to another one of our videos. We are Jehu Security, and my name is Andrew. Today, we'll be walking you through how to install, set up, and use the One Password Password Manager. Today, we'll start by reviewing some of the basic concepts of password managers. Then, we'll go over the install and basic functions, cover a few of the features of the app, and finally, we'll wrap it up with a review of some key settings. If this is your second or third time watching the video, or you're only interested in some parts of the video, we've added chapters to make it easier to navigate. As a disclaimer, we are using Apple iOS and Windows 10 for this tutorial. However, the process is almost exactly the same on Android, Linux, and macOS devices. One noticeable difference is in how the permissions appear. First, an explanation of what this app is and why you should consider using a password manager. In the past, it might have been possible and realistic to get by with only a few passwords to key accounts. These were usually easy to remember or keep track of due to simply how few accounts you had to maintain. In today's digital and online landscape, it seems that everywhere you turn to online wants you to sign up for an account before letting you use their service. If you want to read a news article, it requires you to log in. If you want to order pizza for delivery, it requires you to log in. And this trend continues repeatedly until you amass dozens, if not hundreds of usernames and passwords. Faced with this, the common solution is to reuse the same username, typically a single email address, and the same password over and over between every site we visit. Some people will add a little variety, such as adding the name of the website to the password or changing numbers somewhere in the password. But in the end, this is not sufficient and represents poor password hygiene. Consider that even an extraordinarily long and complex password can be compromised if used repeatedly across websites. This isn't because the password itself could be easily guessed or even cracked in centuries. It is instead because it only takes one unsecured website to leak the information in plain text where it can be used by bad actors. We will talk about good password hygiene and best practices in a later video dedicated to that topic. Here, we will only discuss some basic pointers as we go. So what is the answer to remembering complex username and password combinations? You guessed it, with the help of a password manager. When using a password manager, you typically only need to remember one complex master password or passphrase, and let the password manager take care of the hundred or so other passwords in a safe and secure manner. As a disclaimer here, Jehu Security recommends and follows safe practices with various services that contain deeply private information. That is, if the product is only offered as a free version and is from a publicly traded company, then it may not be trustworthy. This may not always be true, but that air of skepticism often proves beneficial to security and privacy. First, navigate to wherever you purchase your apps. This could be the Google Play Store, Apple App Store, or a website or packet manager on desktop devices. Then, search for 1Password. We always recommend confirming the developer on any app before you download. In this case, it is Agile Bits Incorporated, so we know that this is the app we want. Go ahead and select Git or Install. Then, find it on your device once it's ready. Upon opening it for the first time on iOS, we see our first request for notifications. This permission will need to be made based on your personal threat model. If you would like to support maximum privacy, then select Don't Allow. However, for those individuals with slightly more permissive threat models, it could be acceptable to choose Allow. Either decision does not have a significant impact on the Apple's usefulness. On Android devices, you may get all app permissions at once. On the main page, you will see a number of options. For most users, the best option will be the sign up option. First, enter the email address that you would like to use to create your account, then tap continue. Now, go to your email where you will receive a one-time code. This is usually a six-digit PIN. As a disclaimer, the various login information you see in this video are no longer in service nor connected to Jehu Security. The next prompt will be for a name. 
Keep in mind that this doesn't have to be your full or real name. Next, you will be asked for a master password for the password vault. We recommend for this purpose, you use a passphrase. Passphrases are complex and very long, but are generally easier to remember and type than traditional passwords. This makes them ideal memorized secrets for something like a master password for a service you will enter regularly from memory. Generally, a target of five to seven words comprised of five to eight letters each is ideal. You may fluctuate this slightly based on your needs. We have linked a website in the description to assist with passphrase creation. Then, enter the master password or passphrase again to confirm. On the home page, there is a prompt showing you how to turn on autofill passwords. This shows the steps required to enable one password to autofill in web pages and apps. For now, tap done. You should now see a prompt for enabling biometrics to unlock your device. This may be enabled by default, which is described here as making the app more usable. For most people, enabling this or leaving it enabled will greatly enhance the usability of the app and avoid undue frustration that could prevent successful adoption. Leave the app and go to your phone settings. Navigate to where your passwords are. Look for autofill password options. You will likely notice that your device's native password option is enabled and 1Password is shown, but not enabled. Tap on 1Password to enable this password manager. When 1Password is selected, it will prompt you to log in with your master passphrase. You will then be prompted to enable the auto-copy one-time passwords. We would recommend activating this unless you plan to use another one-time password authentication app such as Authy or Google Authenticator. Once you authorize autofill for 1Password, it is recommended that you disable any other options. To do this, tap on all other options to disable them. The main point for this is to ensure that all passwords are saved in one password manager and not accidentally on your device or in your browser. Now your account is set up and you're ready to start using the app. Next, we'll discuss the layout and some of the features of 1Password. One thing to note is that the full account credential list is saved in the password manager. For most users, this is fine and facilitates you in setting up new devices. However, if you have a high threat model, it may be better to save this to an encrypted text file on a USB or SD card and keep it in a safe place. The first and most obvious task to do with the password manager is to add passwords. This can be done automatically when you visit a website and type in your username and password. 1Password will prompt you to let it remember the password. Most of the time, this is how the login information is stored for your use. In this demonstration, you will have the option to create a login and the 1Password app will present you with a complex password. This can either be a random password made up of all character types, a memorable passphrase, or a numerical pin. One password defaults to a 24 character length on the random password or memorable passphrase, and this is excellent for nearly all cases. After you have selected and saved the password, you can return to the One Password app to view the new login entry. Aside from being able to view your login information and reveal your password, you may also see a banner notifying you of weak or reused passwords or the availability of two-factor authentication on the website registered for the login. 1Password has a really neat method for enrolling and managing one-time passwords for two-factor authentication. Return to the website and make sure you logged in. Find the area of the account that deals with security, privacy, or passwords, depending on the website. Turn on two-factor authentication and enter your password for the website if prompted. Now this should be easy with the login saved on 1Password. You will typically be prompted to scan a QR code from the Authenticator app, but you can enter a manual code as well. If you go to your 1Password app, you will see the option to edit the login that you created for this website. Once in edit mode, you will see the option to add new one-time password. You can choose to click on the small square QR code option to scan with your camera. Choosing this may give you a prompt to allow the app to use the camera. However, here we will enter the manual code 
where you see Secret in this entry. Then click Done to exit the editing menu. Now you will see that you have a one-time password on a perpetual 30-second timer. Copy this password and then paste it into the website to confirm. You will almost always be prompted to view and download your backup codes. These should either be saved in the Password Manager app or in an encrypted file on a removable USB or SD card and kept in a safe location. These codes permit access without a password or one-time password code and are intended for a time when you do not have access to your full login options. Now, to log into a website with a saved password is easy. Navigate to the website, tap in the username or email field, and you should see the prompt in the keyboard or on screen to select the login and password. When the two-factor authentication is enabled, 1Password will automatically copy this code to the clipboard for easy entry in most cases. This presents one of the most seamless ways to enable and use a one-time code among password manager apps. Now we'll go through a few of the features available in 1Password. These are accessible through the Settings button in the bottom row. The first option is 1Password Accounts. This will allow you to log out or add another account. The next section we will look at is Vaults. In Password Managers, Vault is the term used to reference where your passwords are securely stored. Here, you will find the option to create new vaults in your account synced with the 1Password Cloud. For those users with very high threat models, there is an option to create a standalone vault which allows users to create a vault only present on the device it is created and does not sync with the 1Password cloud. The standalone vault would be rare and should only be used if you understand what it is for. Under security, you will find options for altering settings such as when your app locks, prompting a master password, or biometric unlock. This is also where you can turn on watchtower protection monitoring which will monitor for any logins that you have saved with a website for any breaches past or future, and is usually worth turning on. For high threat models, you may not wish to enable this as it does transmit your saved websites, although this is done without revealing the user information. Jehu Security recommends to leave clear clipboard and conceal password enabled by default. Under Password Autofill, this is where you would find the option to enable or disable the one-time password autocopy feature. You may have already selected this from the earlier step. 1Password does have a feature to integrate with your Apple Watch for iOS devices. We would usually not recommend this feature for security reasons, but 1Password does offer additional information designed to show this functionality and explain some possible risks. Under the Advanced tab, you will see the ability to import 1Password vaults, perhaps retrieved from another account. Here, you can also allow the use of third-party keyboards. Although Jehu Security does not recommend this in a password manager, as some third-party keyboards have been known to record keystrokes. A link to one such example is below in the description. Under Security, you will see options on when to require the master password, enable using a PIN, and an additional feature for requiring biometric or master password when you use a one-time password. Next, we'll look at a few of the features of the app. Under the Categories tab on the bottom of the screen, you will find several options for different types of saved items. We would note here that these are simply pre-made templates to be used. In 1Password, creating any new item gives you the full range of additional features while editing the item. We have looked at login items quite a bit. The next option is Secure Notes. This option allows you to write and store secure notes similar to any other note-taking app. It does have the handy feature of being able to store another file within the note, which could be used to store a document without needing to transfer the contents separately. These notes are encrypted and stored within your password vault. These notes may have limited value in most cases. However, for certain notes that may contain deeply private information, this could be a useful way to store those notes securely. Here, you can see the options for additional fields available to you. Under the Identities option, you can input information that you would like to use later for autofilling on websites that ask for name, address, phone number, and other information. This is optional, but can make forms much easier to fill out should you choose to use this.
On a desktop or laptop computer, you can install the 1Password app as an add-on or extension to your browser. One note here is that if you are using only the browser extension, select 1Password X. If you are using this in conjunction with a desktop 1Password app, then select 1Password extension. On Linux computers, the 1Password X may be the only option available. A note here, we recommend only a few necessary browser extensions be downloaded and enabled, and these should be selected carefully. It is often easy to overlook that browser extensions or add-ons are applications in their own right. As such, they can have far-reaching impact on your privacy and security if the extension or add-on is not safe. One password is safe to install. Once installed on your browser, you may need to find the extension and enable it. In nearly all cases, you will need to log in at least on the first time you use it. Although on macOS and Windows, the browser extension may identify the desktop 1Password app if it is already installed and logged in. Don't forget to check your browser and make sure that the browser's native password feature is turned off, which prevents login leaks to your browser. 1Password does not have a free version and is only available as a paid subscription. At the time of this video, the individual plan is $3 per month and the family plan is $5 per month when the annual subscription is selected. You should now have all the information you need to get started with the 1Password password manager. At JHU Security, we highly recommend password managers for their ability to create, organize and assist with login credentials for navigating websites and apps that require passwords. Although password managers are not a magic cure for password security, they do increase good password hygiene by limiting password reuse or choosing weak passwords. For this purpose, we find that 1Password is secure and has a reliable and open business model that can be trusted. As a note, JHU Security is not affiliated with nor endorsed by 1Password. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and click the like button if you have found value. A lot of time and effort goes into each of our videos to try to make content that adds value to you. To help others find this information more readily, consider subscribing and sharing our videos for others to see. Stay active and stay secure.